Hey guys, it's the Nike the Hazina Girl, and today we're going to be talking about how you can convince your parents to let you go to Japan. So let's get right into it. If you're new to my channel, my name is Senna. I'm an Afro-Canadian girl who's been living in Japan for four years now. I moved here when I was 18 years old and I'm now 22. I'm a fashion student and I love living here. I absolutely adore my life in Japan. But before I could start this amazing journey that I did living here, I first had to have a conversation with my parents being like, hey, can I go to Japan? Is that cool? And I'm sure if you guys are in high school or if you're young and you know, you're still living with your parents, you're gonna have to have that conversation with them at some point. Like, hey, listen, I have this plan. I want to move to Japan. What do you think about it? And I think most parents, when they hear that, they're like, <laughs> no. But I think there are ways that you can convince your parents. And of course it depends. Like I know some parents are more strict than others, but these are rules that I still use to convince my parents and to show them that I was really serious about moving to Japan. So I just wanna share them with you guys. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to list the reasons why you want to move to Japan. Now, some reasons are a little bit better at convincing parents than others. If you're like, mom, I absolutely love anime and honestly, like I really just wanna check out this anime cafe that like I heard about from Instagram and honestly, like my friend told me that it's really awesome and if I go, it's gonna be really great and I promise you that it's gonna be like honestly the best experience of my life and like, yeah. Your parents are gonna be like, sis, you're gonna stay right here, okay? So when you're making this list of reasons why you want to move to Japan, yes, maybe you can have the anime cafe that you've always wanted to check out at the back of your mind, but the reasons that you want to list out that you're gonna give to your parents have to be things that they can get behind, you know? Reasons like, I wanna study in Japan, I wanna do a year, a gap year in Japan, I want to get some work experience in Japan, or I really like Japanese culture, or get some language skills. I think your parents can get behind an idea like that because it's uh, a little bit more, how do you say, mature? So make sure you're making lists of reasons that make sense to your parents, you know what I mean? So now that you've made a list of reasons why you want to move to Japan, the next step is to have a plan in place, okay? You can't just be going to Japan with no plan. Like, what's your Japan plan? Come on, write it down, honey. Your Japan plan could be anything. Like, okay, I want to study for a semester, or it can be I want to study for a year, or I want to come to Japan for three years. I want to get this much experience. I want to work in this kind of company. If you have like a plan of some kind, it's honestly going to go a long way in convincing your parents. Your parents are going to be like, okay, all right, I see you. You're trying to organize yourself. I can appreciate that. All right, so once you have a plan in place, the next thing you're going to want to do is make a list of all the things you're going to need to pay for. Obviously, if you want to move to Japan, the first thing you're going to need is a plane ticket. You're also going to need to figure out your rent situation. You're going to have to figure out how much you're going to pay for tuition if you're coming here for school. Maybe your visa requires you to have a certain amount of money in your bank, so you got to do some research and find out about that. And just, you know, plan ahead. Like, if you know that for the first couple months, maybe you're not going to be able to get a job, then plan out the amount of money you're going to need for the first maybe three months for just, like, living expenses, you know? And I plan on making a video about this a little bit in the future, but, yeah, if you guys are interested in seeing something like that make sure you let me know in the comments below i think it's really important to list out the things you're going to need financially so that you can start to plan out how much money you're going to need and that actually leads me to my next point which is you're going to need to save money on your own okay you can't expect your parents to save money for you if you're not even saving for yourself you know what i mean like honey please get to work put that money in your bank now i know when you're younger you're like my mom's got this my dad's got this my parents gonna pay for me it's cool no, 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 sis. If you want to convince your parents to let you go abroad, you're going to need to start saving up money by yourself. And I know a lot of you guys watching, maybe you're like, you know, not the legal working age in your country. Maybe you still can't get a job yet. But honestly, just do whatever it takes. Ask your uncle, sisters, brothers, cousins, girlfriends, nieces, aunties, wife to just give you a job watching the dog, mowing the lawn, washing cars. Do whatever it is that you can do to legally make money. Legally. All okay, right, don't be doing illegal stuff. That's not cute. Your parents are not gonna like that. If you are like just being a hustler, saving whatever money that you possibly can, I'm sure your parents will appreciate it and they'll see that, wow, you're really working hard to make this dream of yours come true. And of course they'll wanna support you. Now the next step is learn the language. So obviously if you're planning to move to Japan, learn Japanese. 
Go online, look up some Japanese lessons, start learning hiragana, start learning katagana, start learning a little kanji. And if you can, you can also maybe look up in your neighborhood if, you know, they're maybe offering some Japanese lessons. Like when I was、um, back in Canada, I actually found out that the embassy nearby was offering Japanese lessons to people who were interested. And so I took those classes and I did that for like about six months. And that was great. It was a really great way to help convince my parents to see how serious I was and to tell them, like, hey, listen, not only am I Planning this out, but like I actually do want to learn the language so that when I get there, I can, you know, figure things out on my own two feet. I can talk to people, I can communicate, I can ask questions. And yeah, that'll go a long way to prove that you're really serious about this plan of yours. So now you've learned Japanese, you're saving up money, you've got a plan in place. The next step that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick a date. To when you're gonna move to Japan. Now, when you're picking a date, be patient. Don't rush. You don't have to move to Japan tomorrow. Japan is not going anywhere. The island is still gonna be here, honey, okay? Just make sure you're picking a date that makes sense for you, a date that's gonna allow you to save up enough money, a date that's gonna allow you to just be comfortable when you arrive. Because you don't wanna like rush and be like, okay, mom and dad, I'm moving to Japan in three months. And then in three months, you don't have enough money saved up, you don't know what you're doing, and then you arrive and you're like, oh my god, what have I done? I moved to a whole new country, I have no money. I have No one to help me. I don't speak the language. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't let it get to that point. Okay? Just don't do it. And another thing I actually have to suggest、um, when you're picking a date to come to Japan, make sure you give yourself a little bit of leeway, okay? So that you can arrive, get comfortable, and then start your like. You know, everyday life and get into your routine. So, the, for the first two weeks, I was just walking around, getting used to the train system, figuring out how to get to Shibuya, how to go to Harajuku, how to recharge my Pasmo, how to, you know, go to the Konbini and, like, you know, buy snacks, how to just navigate Japan as a country, you know? So, I think it's really important for you guys to give yourself that little bit of leeway.、Uh, and yeah, that's a little bonus tip for you. Now that you've planned it out, you've picked a date that makes sense, you've talked to your parents about it, you've saved some money, you've done all the steps, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is contact anyone who lives in Japan. So if you have a friend, or maybe a friend of a friend, an acquaintance, somebody who you know of who lives in Japan, try your best to reach out to them and ask them as many questions as possible. Find out what the experience is gonna be like so you can be as prepared as you possibly can. So, for me, actually, that person was、um, a friend of our families who basically had already gone to Japan several times. She already spoke Japanese. She had Japanese textbooks too. And she gave me so many tips. She just told me what it's like to go to Japan, what it's like to live here. Also, she was just s h a p p e n e d to be a black girl as well. So, I was like, okay, like, what's it like being a black girl in Japan? Like, can you give me tips? Am I gonna have to deal with racism? Do I have to, like, prepare myself to. You know, get into some fist fights. Of course, she said no. And guess what, guys? If you don't know anyone who lives in Japan, you know me. Send me a little DM, text me your you know, concerns, your inquiries, the things you want to find out. I always love to answer you guys' questions, and I already get DMs from a lot of you guys. And I think that's great. You guys are already taking really big steps to like, you know, make your dreams come true. But the one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is that everybody's experience is different, and you are definitely going to learn more from your own personal experience than you are from someone else's experience. So just take everything that people tell you with a grain of salt because your experience is going to be different. Just keep that in mind, okay? The next thing is be consistent, okay? If you're saying today you wanna go to Japan and then tomorrow you wanna go to Timbuktu, your parents gonna be like, what's going on, sis? You gotta get together, you know, you gotta be consistent. It's gonna make it so much easier for you to be consistent if you've done all the steps that we've talked about so far. Because obviously, if you have a plan in place, you're gonna to wanna to go through with it all the way. But make sure that you're constantly talking about Japan. You're telling them, hey, mom and dad, have you heard that, like, this article that I read about this thing that you're interested in? That's a great way to get your parents to be on board, by the way. Make sure you like slip them things that you know they would be interested in about Japan. And if you're like learning Japanese for three months and then you give up after two months and then you're like, you know what, forget this. I'm not really into learning Japanese. Your parents can be like, um, what happened with Japanese? I thought you said you were going to Japan. So let's say you've done all these steps. You've planned, you've saved, you've contacted people, you've decided a date that makes sense, and your parents are still not down to let you come to Japan. This is kind of like a last resort. This is something actually that I used as well, and it's a technique that I think might work for you guys. So maybe you're asking your parents to move to Japan for a year. You're like, hey, mom and dad, I want to do this course. It's a year long. What do you think? And they're like, a year? Uh, no, never. I would never let you do that. I think in that case, the best thing you can do is say, okay, how about instead of a year, is it okay if I go for three months? Or is it okay if I go for just one month? Or even one week? 
convince your parents to let you come for a very short amount of time. And after they've let you go for a little bit, maybe they'll ease up to the idea of letting you go a little bit longer, you know? And that's what I did. I actually asked my parents to just let me come here for three months first. And I got the chance to see what Japan was like for myself. And it really helped me also get a real sense of whether or not Japan was the country for me. Because some people do come to Japan thinking like, this is going to be great. I'm going to have a great time. Yeah. And then they get here and they don't have a great time. And they end up going back to their home country way sooner than they expected. You don't want that to be the case for you. So try that out, it might work for you. And that brings me to my last point, which is let some time pass. I think if your parents see you for like two straight years, just constantly gathering information about Japan, saving up money for Japan, getting as much contact with people who live in Japan as possible, then your parents eventually are going to have to warm up to the idea that this is something that you've always wanted to do. This is a dream of yours. And even if they never really warm up to that idea, letting time pass is going to allow you to also get older, to be more mature. And guess what? The more time passes by, the more money you'll have saved up, the more Japanese you'll have learned, the more information you'll have, the more you'll be able to just really be completely kind of independent. And you'll be able to prove to them that, listen, this is something I want to do. And now that I'm old enough to do it, can I? So yeah, I hope it works out for all of you guys. I hope that, you know, your relationship with your parents gets better as time goes by, that you just keep earning their trust. And yeah, let me know in the comments below what your parents' reaction was when you told them you wanted to go to Japan. I'd love to hear what your experiences were, so let me know in the comments below. And I'm gonna link two videos here um, that I made in the past talking about Japan, so make sure you check those out too, because they're very interesting and I'm sure they'll be helpful to you. So yeah, see you in the next video, bye!